I'm coming from as sitting back, listening to what was going on um, on this program. I was in tears just from hearing what, I remember the names because I wanted to respond to something that Tasha said, something uh, that one of the ladies said in the audience. Mm -hmm. And what, specifically, what was it, dear? Go right to, to it. What did Tasha say that brought Ta you to tears? Tasha said that you cannot get out of the gangs because they won't let you out of the gangs. But from where I'm coming from, how, I mean, I'm trying to put in like, but wait, where I don't offend Tasha. I didn't say that. No, somebody, well, maybe it was somebody that said it. Maybe I she could be said, wrong. how can you get out of the gang? I said, it's not that easy. I didn't say you can't get out. Oh, because well, you can't. I didn't say that. Well, excuse me, Tasha. Okay. Um, no problem. Maybe it was just somebody in there. But what I was coming from is saying, do you really understand what you're saying? You're saying that you are letting someone dictate your life, your past, and your future. Mm. Mm. That's what I'm coming from. And Tasha, that is, that is a young lady from inside telling you that. Okay. She's but, been but, but in... Wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are I, you there? I'm here because I committed a crime. And I, that's my, I have the self-responsibility of that. Martha? I, yes? What, 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 tell us what happened in your life that made you end up in a cell block? <laughs> well, the things, well, what I'm here for is for gangbanging. Um, I ended up stabbing a girl five times, hospitalizing her. Fortunately, she did not die. However, I'm listening to these people talking about gangs. And they're talking about about having a hard time getting out, which there's not. If they're really your friends, then they're going to respect your choices to get your education, to get a job. And I hear these, I hear these ladies talking about that it's hard. You know, it, it's hard to get a job. Um, they don't have food, so on and so forth. It is hard because that's how my family is. However, the gangs need to work together. The rasa, the black people, you need to work together as a people instead of killing each other, shooting at each other. Is it, ladies, Martha and Cynthia, is it serving time that has gotten your head turned back on the right track? Yes, it took, it took me, I mean, I have nine years on top of my head. I'm, I'm serving four. And I realize now I'm going to school here. They have many programs here. I, I, I maintain a 4.0 in college. I go to, I have a job here, and that's going to get me out, outside. I already have connections to go to another college. I have my job set from this place, and I realize the things what a gang does to you. Tell me what we as non-gang members who are quite frankly threatened and very concerned about gang violence in this nation. What is it that we should understand if we don't get anything else here in this hour and coming live down there to you? What do you think that we need to understand as a nation? Well, everybody needs to be concerned about everybody because because you're not from a gang doesn't mean it's not your problem because it's everybody's problem. Mm -hmm. And we need to build more programs for instance, in the neighborhoods, in the ghettos, we need to have more programs for the kids because the kids are our future, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that we're going to lead right up there. And we just got to work together as a team. It's not, it's not easy. It's something that's not going to be changed overnight. Okay. I, I, I have something to say as far as that. Um, in our society today, we know that people are so quick to judge you on your actions and a lot of things that you do. But there's very few that are willing to help. And I think that's where our main concern. We always nick and pick and point the finger and yes, because there's a problem there. But I think there's so many people that are judging and complaining and, you know, saying how bad these kids are. I think that they need to be more of a helper than mm -hmm. being a gossiper or being a troublemaker. Thank because you. the more you talk about something, the more you're getting people in the uproar. Why not say, okay, how can we solve this problem? And we're going to ask that question, and we need your guidance in this as well. We'll be right back after this. Mm -hmm. Violence today, and 
We left in that last break saying that we need to find some solutions. And I agree with what you were saying. Come on and join me here, Leslie. I agree with what people have been saying here that, that it is all of our responsibility to do something. Um, what can we do? And, and, and are we, should, do, I mean, do young people want help in this situation, the young people in gangs? They desperately want help. Every single one of them that I've ever met. Because they come across so hard, and so I mean, because that's part of the life, and it's like, it's that's part of the mythology. Let me get quickly to solutions, <clears throat> and let me say that first of all, we need to have every pregnancy be a wanted pregnancy. We have the highest teenage pregnancy rate in the industrialized world, and California has the highest rate in the United States. So what can we do about gang violence? We need to violence. intervene early so that every mother who has a baby has in home support during the first year of life. There's a program in Fairfield, California called Child Haven that does that. Mm -hmm. It's cheap. It costs a thousand dollars a year per family. So we need better child care so that kids don't end up in Early the streets. Early intervention. It's much more than child care. It's in-home support for okay. these mothers who don't know what to do with these babies. Okay, what else can we do? Okay, what else can we two. do? Number two, all of the programs that I know about who are any good, like the Marine Institute in Florida, that really train people for skills because the task of adolescence is skill mastery. They're all for boys. Let's gear them for girls. Mm -hmm. Let's make skill mastery something that's good for girls and that's available to girls. Mm -hmm. Number three. And save that because we've got to take a break. And I want you to get that last point in. Okay. We'll be right back after this. I mean... Mm -hmm. before you make your statement, what was that last solution that we could possibly consider? Realize that every child is your child, and if, if there's a child in your community that needs a home and that child doesn't have a home, give that child a home to whatever degree you can. That's right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And you say what, Deborah? Stop telling the children what to do. Start listening to them. No one really wanted to hear what she has to say, but everyone thinks she's talking too much. That's the problem now. They need to listen. They are crying out for help, and no one's there. Everybody talk about what you can do. Put money into the programs that I am in and set into the prison systems. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ladies, Martha, Cynthia, for joining us. We hope that you have, you have certainly given us a lot to think about. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. All of you ladies, thank you for being with us. Thank you, audience, and we will see you next time on Rolando.